This video is brought to you by Dev Mountain, a coding bootcamp that offers in-person and online courses in a variety of subjects, including web development, iOS development, user experience design, software quality assurance, and Salesforce development. For more information, consult the link in the description below. We will drive APIs into our Python script that allows us to extract and write contents to those sheets. We're going to shift gears a little bit and create the component that's going to navigate to Amazon and extract the price, the product name, these sorts of things. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file, which I'm going to call Amazon underscore bot.py. And I'm going to start off by just importing some things that we're going to be making use of for this uh, part of the code. So I'm actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy off screen all of the things that we're going to make use of and I'm just going to paste them in here and if you don't want to pause and write each of these out you don't have to all of the code that I'm writing in this series is actually available on my github and you can find that link in the description to this video and you can download the code and you that way you don't have to write all of this out from scratch so these are the things that we're going to be making use of just a little bit of an overview about what some of these things are going to be doing so up here beautiful soup when we extract HTML source from a web page, we might want to navigate that structure. So Beautiful Soup, if you haven't used it before, has uh, the ability for us to navigate through that HTML structure and extract the data that we care about. If you want, there's a series of Beautiful Soup on my channel. You can check that out if you want more information. Selenium, I also have a series of this on my channel as well. This is a automated framework for Python that allows you to automate browser operations in Firefox or Chrome. So you can open up a browser, you can navigate to a web page automatically, and you can kind of uh, go through various links. You can follow links and, and fill in uh, content and forms and things like that. So we're going to be making use of Selenium in order to do that. The final two, uh, RE is for regular expressions. Sometimes when you're parsing content from a website, you want to extract the component, and sometimes the easiest way to do that is with regular expressions. Ideally, you stick with Beautiful Soup as the way to do that, but every now and then regular expressions come in handy. And then time, so sometimes you want to wait for an operation to complete before you move on to the next thing, and you want to just kind of pepper in a little bit of a wait time there, before the next action completes. So that time there is, uh, that's what we're gonna be using that for. So you may not have Selenium and Beautiful Soup installed. Again, I have series on both of these packages individually. So if you want more information on how they work or what they can do, then you can check that out. But since I want this tutorial to be as self-contained as possible, let's just make sure that we have both of those packages installed. So I'm going to open up a new tab. I'm going to say pip install BS4. So this is going to install Beautiful Soup. I already have this installed, so it's just going to say requirement already satisfied. I'm going to do the same thing with Selenium. So pip install Selenium. And since I already have this installed, it's just going to say requirement already satisfied. And if you have both of those installed, if you've seen my tutorials on both of those, you should be fine. If not, this will at least get you uh, up to base level. RE and time, these are part of the standard Python package, so there's nothing to do there. So what I'm going to do with this Amazon bot and what we will continue to do as we go back to the Google Sheets is we're going to take kind of more of a class-based approach because I think it makes, especially like a larger project like this, a little bit easier to manage. So I'm going to create a class which is going to be responsible for searching, extracting the price, and getting the name of the uh, item in question. So I'm going to say class, put two spaces here, class Amazon bot. So I'm just going to give it uh, arbitrarily the same name as the file and then I'm just going to pass an object here. So I'm creating a class, and again, if you haven't seen classes before, if you're unfamiliar with how they work, you don't necessarily need to know too much about classes for understanding the content of this video. Really, I'm just kind of bunching a bunch of functions inside of a class so we can make use of them later. It's just when we get to combining some of these other components that we're working on, uh, having a more modular structure is going to serve us very well. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the constructor of the class. This is just going to initialize a number of things that we're going to make use of for an object that we might instantiate for this class. So I'm going to say self and then items. So items is going to be a list. We're going to be passed in a list of items that we want to search for. This constructor is going to take that item list and it's going to maybe go through it, look for the product price, look for the title, those sorts of things. So it's just going to be a list of items that we're going to eventually extract from the Google Sheet that we're working with. Okay, so inside of this constructor, I'm going to say self, this is a class variable, Amazon underscore URL. I'm going to set this equal to the base URL. So this is where we want to we want our script to navigate to. So in this case, we want our script to navigate to 
uh, Amazon. So we'll say Amazon in this case dot ca. Uh, put another slash there, and I'll say self dot items is equal to items. So all I'm doing there is I'm saying whatever we're passing in from this constructor here, this items variable, go ahead and create a class variable that's private to the object that we instantiate that's equal to whatever we pass in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Selenium to create a browser profile profile for Firefox that we're going to uh, open up and navigate to the website and then do everything that we need to do using this object. So I'll say self.profile is equal to web driver and this is what we've imported from Selenium dot Firefox profile. So this is just like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say self.options is equal to options. And then I'm going to create the actual driver object itself. So the, the reason I created this options thing is if you wanted to add any other options, like maybe you want to run the script headlessly, that is without popping open the browser, you can add those options in later. So I'm just kind of putting this in as a placeholder for now, if you're wondering why I'm putting in options. Uh, it's not necessary that you do that uh, if you don't want to, but uh, if you want to follow along, um, and I think for what we want to have planned, this is kind of a good way to go. So let me just close that. So I'll say self dot driver is equal to web driver and then dot Firefox profile or not profile, but dot Firefox. And then we're going to pass in the profile that we've created up above. So Firefox profile is equal to self dot profile. And then also uh, I should spell that right. So Firefox profile is equal to self dot profile and Firefox underscore options is equal to self dot options. So all we're doing there is we're just creating this web driver object that Selenium allows us to create. We're saying instantiate a browser of Firefox and then for whatever profile or options we've specified from before, go ahead and create an, a browser with those uh, things as we've specified them. So the next thing I want to do is I want to actually get the Amazon URL. So it's just self dot driver dot get and then this is going to navigate to the uh, Amazon URL that we specified up above. So that is pretty much all we need to do in the constructor. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write code that's going to actually uh, go to that URL, in this case Amazon, and then search through all of the items in a given list. And that list is going to be the item list that we created or that we extracted, uh, that we set in our constructor. So let's create a class function which is called search items. And since it's part of the class, it's going to take the self parameter. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a number of lists. So I'm going to say URLs is equal to an empty list, uh, prices, empty list, and also names. So these are the lists that we're going to, right now they're empty. They're going to store all of the um, respective URLs, prices, and names, product names, for each of the items that we're processing. So remember, we had this list of items, could be like toothpaste, toothbrush, floss, those sorts of things. We're going to go through each one of those items, and then inside of each of these respective lists, we're going to store the URL, price, and name for each of the items as we process it. So I'm going to say for item in self.items. So this is the class variable items that we had from before. I want to loop through each of those things. And I'm just going to say, uh, let's just put in a print message so that way we can kind of keep track of where we are. So I'll say print f searching for item. So if you're not familiar with f strings, basically, uh, if you're in Python 3.6 and beyond, I believe, you can put an f before you put in the double quotes. And then anything you put in between these curly braces is going to be evaluated within the print statement. So if you're familiar with print.format or uh, percent C or percent D as you would do in like C++, this is kind of the same concept. You're essentially just evaluating the variable inside of this print statement. So this is going to actually print out the item that we're searching for. So that's just a message to help us. It's not necessary. So what we're going to do as well in this loop is we're going to actually navigate to Amazon. So I'm going to say self.driver.get self.amazon and the reason that I'm doing this again is because once we search for an item the drop down list of departments changes every time respect with respect to the item that you search for so I'm just kind of refreshing it going to the home page of Amazon again so that way it's kind of ready to search for the next item so once we search for uh, once we actually get the URL for amazon.ca again we're going to what we'd like to do let's actually go to Amazon and just see what we're working with 
So right now I'm on the Amazon homepage and what I'd like to do is I'd like to search for an item. And the way you search for an item is this bar up here. So I want some way to actually access this search bar. So if I right click on this and say inspect, it's going to take me here and it's going to tell me that the ID of that search bar is equal to this thing here. So it says like two uh, tab search text box. Text box. So we want to search for that item on this page that we navigated to with that ID and then send some item to that search box. So that's what we're going to do next. So let's go back to our terminal. Score input is equal to element by ID. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for an element on the web page that has a given ID. What ID does it have? Well, if we go here and just again right click on this search box, the ID that we want to extract is this one right here. So I'm just going to copy that, move back to the terminal, and then inside of quotes, I'm just going to paste in the ID of that element. So the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to, once we find that search box, is we want to send some element to that search, search box. In this case, we want to send the item that we're looping over. So we're going to say search input dot send keys and what are we sending it well we're sending it the item that we're looping through so this could be toothpaste toothbrush whatever it happens to be in this case we're going to just send that text into that element on the page so then the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to say time dot sleep for two seconds so this is not the most elegant of ways to do it generally what you want to do when you're waiting for something to happen on a website is you want to wait for a given element to pop up so for instance if you search for something in a text box you want to wait for the search results before you do the next thing. So there's a WebDriver wait component of Selenium that will allow you to do that. It's a little bit more refined, a little bit more elegant, probably the better way to do it. For the sake of example, I'm just going to put in an explicit sleep. The problem with this is that it could be more or less depending on your connection speed and other things like that. Two seconds seems to work consistently well. I've never had a problem with it for this particular use case. But if your situation differs, maybe just kind of try to bump up that sleep time or more elegantly try to make use of the WebDriver weights component of Selenium to wait for the next uh, thing to actually load up. So I'm just going to sleep for two seconds after that has uh, happened, after we sent that item into the search box. And what is the next thing that we do when we search for something in Amazon? So once we send something to the uh, text box, we want to actually search it. So at this point, we've pasted in toothpaste. We've popped that into the search box. The next thing we want to do is actually click on this button here. So let's find out where that is on the page by right-clicking on that and saying inspect. So unlike the box itself where it had the ID that explicitly tied it to something, I don't see anything here that uh, gives it any um, you know, identifiable component that we can make use of in Selenium. So I don't see an ID, I don't see a name. But what we can do is we can copy the XPath of this, of this thing and we can use that so we can find the element on the page by its XPath. So if you right click on that and say copy XPath, we can copy the XPath of that button. And so I'm just going to uh, copy that and then move that over into our code. So just moving this over here. Where's my mouse? There it is. Okay, so back here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say search underscore button and then we're going to say self dot driver dot find element not by ID but by XPath and then inside of single quotes I'm just going to paste in the XPath that I copied. The next thing that I want to do is once we've identified that element on the page I'm going to click it. So I'm going to say search button dot click and then I'm going to go ahead and put in another time dot sleep again for two seconds probably would make sense to do this a little bit more elegantly using the wait uh, web driver wait method okay so now that we've got this core component this is really just going to open up a browser find a list of items eventually these list of items are going to come from our spreadsheet for the time being we're just going to, to show that this works with kind of a dummy python list so we're just going to put in some elements make sure it actually opens up a browser goes to the page searches it and that's it so let's go ahead and just run this as a standalone so i'm going to create an object amazon bot which is equal to an instance of the amazon class that we just created and we're going to go ahead and pass it some list of items so the list of items in this case can be very simple. It can just be, let's just say toothpaste. So it's just an item with one string in there, toothpaste. It's going to use that item 
create an object of this class. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say Amazon bot dot search items. So it's going to search items based on the list that it has that we pass in uh, to create this object. So let's just go ahead and make sure that this actually works. So we'll say Python Amazon bot. So we'll run this. It'll pop open an instance of Firefox. We see that it's navigating to amazon.ca, that's good. We see that it's hopefully going to pop in toothpaste and it's going to hit the search button and that's it. So at this point, we need to modify the script so that way we search the item, but also so that we can extract the components that we care about, namely the price and name, URL, those sorts of things. Okay, so I think that's where I'm gonna leave it for this video. In the next video, we're going to continue on and we're going to uh, get the price and other pieces of information that we want for a particular item. So that pretty much does it. I'll see you in the next video.